Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Inside the Mirror. Today, we got my good buddy, Fernando Torres. My guy is popping. Glad to be here, man. It's been a long time coming. Glad to have you. So let's just dive right into it, man. Who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Where'd you come from? What are you about? I'm from uh, outer space. I just escaped Area 51. It looks like it. No, yeah, man. I was uh, actually born in Mexico, a uh, small town called Celaya, Guanajuato. Uh, I got here uh, back in early 2000, uh, so about 20 years ago. Uh, I got here. Um, just, you know, been been here on the struggle, trying to make it, trying to make a mm-hmm. dollar, 25 cents. <laughs> Now, you're married, you got kids, you're, you're a husband, you're a father, you're a man of faith. Uh, sure. What are you all about? Like, what, like as far as, like, what have, you, what have you learned? Like, as you say, the struggle, we'll go back to that. But, like, what are some principles you, like, live by now? Because you're a man, I know you're a man of principles and, and faith. You live by a certain set of morals. Talk about that. Yes, sir. Well, uh, you know, we've all had our, our struggles, our um, our convictions at some point. So, you know, you live, you learn, and you know, I just try to I just try to do the right thing now nowadays. You know, I just it seems like you know the more you deviate yourself from your spiritual side, the more you're out here in this world and you separate yourself from who you who you could really be, other than you know. Uh, just living, you know, life in the now, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of times people just, they focus on now, you know, they don't focus on what's to come. And a lot of times, you know, that's, that's the downfall. We, we, we focus too much on what's going on right now and how we can make ourselves happy now and how, you know, we can benefit ourselves right now. We don't really think of the future and, you know, you, if you have kids, man, you have to you have to prep them for the for the future, and you know that's kind of what I stand by nowadays. And you know, try mm-hmm. to be a good father, try to be there for my kids as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I had to you know uh, kind of fix my uh, my uh, work status a little bit because I was uh, spending too much uh, time at work, and I was kind of you know neglecting my my at home uh, life and mm-hmm. you know sometimes you gotta you gotta take risk and you gotta you know take a few losses but in the end it's gonna it's gonna be worth it you know because now i have more time with my kids and you know i know that god has a plan for everybody and i know he's gonna look out for me in the future so i'm not you know too worried about what's going on right now you know just kind of we our, our faith's already set you know, we just got to let them take control and just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. Man, if, if people were able to think like you, I think I've told you this for years, man. I was telling my dad yesterday, this like, and I've told you this before, you have the ability to remain like calm and even keel in situations where I get riled up, other people get riled up, people get angry, frustrated. And you just like have this, God's giving you like this ability to just like remain calm in, in a lot of situations. Like, have you always been that way? Or like, how did you get to that point? No, man, even up to day, I still struggle sometimes, you know, I kind of have to check myself at, at times and I have to uh, kind of like go in the thought process of not saying the wrong things because a lot of times, even in, in relationships, you know, we, we get mad at each other and we always try to one up each other with the insults or try to make, you know, each other feel, see who could make each other feel worse. You know what I mean? And I was just having a conversation with my wife yesterday about that. I was like, we need to be better about, you know, not wanting uh, to, you know, go the extra mile to, you know, hurt each other to see who has the, the last word, you know, because that just jeopardizes, you know, your, your relationship as, you know, as a couple, you have to be on the same page at all times. So there's times where, you know, it's like I get out of character at times, man, you know, because you know, life is just full of surprises, you know, like now with, with this COVID thing, you know, it just, it's very easy to get, you know, 
out of your your character because of the lack of uh, of um, interaction that you have with other people. So you kind of get closed off and like away from everybody. That it's really hard to keep up with, you know, who you really are. So, and having kids, it's you know, it's it's a, a prime example, man. You just wanna you wanna be the same person at all times. You don't wanna keep switching them off because you don't wanna confuse them. You don't want them to think that. You know, just because you're acting a certain way, that you're going to be different towards them. You don't want to confuse them in the sense that, you know, they want to walk on eggshells around you because they don't want to, you know, trigger you. you off. Yeah. And, you know, it's all about respect, man. I, I try to teach my kids, you know, respect is the number one thing. You have to respect each other. You have to listen to each other. And, you know, I try to encourage that on my kids also, I want them to see it through me. So, you know, even if I have arguments with my wife, I try not to, you know, involve the kids or have the kids around when we're, you know, talking at a mm -hmm. at a higher pitch, not to say yelling. <laughs> but, yeah, man, everybody has their struggles, bro. You know, like, mm -hmm. you just have to, you know, equip yourself. And, you know, the, um, the good book is always, you know, the, the backbone of everything. I feel like, you know... If I'm struggling with anything, I could just look anything up and it's going to uplift me like right away without even having to search for any type of, you know, proverbs. You open up the good book, man, and it's right there. You know, you just have to open your eyes and open your mind because a lot of times we we seek false information. You know, we, we want to be right so much that, you know, we're taking in knowledge that's not really helping us at all. and. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you take that and you know you imply it on other people and you know it makes them not want to be around you so i try to surround with myself with good people that have the same goal in life and they have the same um um view when it comes to you know faith and um family values as well you know mm -hmm. i've spoken to your father many times i know your uncle you your sister you know you're very like family oriented and i love that man and it's just really hard finding people like that nowadays that just want to go out and party and you know get wasted you know like i'm at a point in my life where that, that doesn't call my attention you know what i mean right it's, Yo, it's funny that you uh it's funny that you talked about like uh uh like like knowing like uh how to how to like where you go when you're when you're in struggles or when you're having tough times like where do you go like I was just on a podcast earlier and we were talking about that in a different uh, sense about like um, when when you're having a when you're having a tough time in life whether it be you're you're feeling depressed you're feeling anxious you're being hit with life struggles if you don't have a plan and if you don't know where to turn to or who to turn to or what resources to use life will swallow you whole you will get crushed by life, right? And I think that's amazing that you said that. Like, you have to have a plan and know that, like, hey, when life hits, I'm going here. I'm going to the people that I trust. I'm going to the book that I trust. I'm going to the resources that I trust. Because if you don't have a plan and life hits you, you just start flailing around. And like you said, you just start trying to find things that, that, that uh, validate your perspective, uh, your negative perspective. And then you start putting that on other people. And you and you haven't actually looked for the truth. You just look for what fits your agenda. You know what I mean? It's funny, man, because like, you know, as as human beings, like, we're so eager to help that sometimes we're jeopardizing the other person. I don't know if you you've uh, you've uh, encountered this firsthand, but you know, like every time you get a ticket, all of a sudden everybody becomes a lawyer. You know, you get sick, you're all like automatically you're a doctor. You know. Uh, your car breaks down. Oh man, you're the mechanic. You know what I mean? Instead of thinking, you know, you know, you want to put your two cents on everything because you want people to know that you know things. But at the end of the day, you know, if you take their advice and they're wrong, it could jeopardize you. You know, you want to go to the people that actually know what they're talking about, and you know. The same thing, like, if, if I would have any conviction, any, like, struggles with my faith, I would come to you because we have similar interest in faith. I would go to your father, you know? I wouldn't go to an atheist to talk about God, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's simple, man, but we just have to, you know, 
put that idea in our heads that not everybody is out to help you, you know? Mm -hmm. There's gonna be bad people. There's gonna be, you know, wolf, wolves in sheep clothing sometimes, and they're gonna, you know, want to drag you down with them. People are not happy at all times, you know. Mm -hmm. So misery loves company, man. So you just gotta watch out for those people that don't want what's best for you, you know. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that. It's so true. Like everybody's a doctor when you're sick. Everybody's a lawyer when you get a ticket. I'm gonna have to clip that for Instagram. That's amazing. Uh, but like. You don't have to talk about too much uh, of your personal stuff if you don't want, but as far as you want to go, like, because right now, like, uh, um, obviously, a racial, racial uh, issues are at, obviously, at the forefront of conversation, social media, all that. You are a purebred minority. You weren't born in this country. Um, but thankfully, you're here and you contribute a whole lot. Talk about the struggle of being a minority in a, in a foreign country. Like, what's that been like? It's not yeah. easy, is it? It's not easy, but you know, I haven't. I mean, I, I personally, I've been uh, uh, treated according to the color of my skin or, or my background, you know. But you gotta understand that's that's never gonna end. People are gonna have their views of you, and you can't change the way people think. You know what I mean? We are our own worst enemy. I've told this, you know, thousands of times to to other people that. You know, you can't change people's how people's opinion of you. You know what I mean? You can only uh, uh, account for what you do. And, you know, as far as, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, talked against or uh, when it comes to, you know, race or like being profiled. Yeah, I've been a victim of all those things, but I don't let that define me or who I am. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're all one race which is the human race you know and how you portray yourself or your image is how people are going to view you at the same time you know so mm -hmm. uh, I, I just don't believe in equality i don't believe in that because you know you set our own goal you set your own goals you set you, your own boundaries uh, mm -hmm. i've talked to you about this before you know uh, i've seen a lot of people that just talk about how they don't have equal opportunities or you know they're being judged by the color of their skin you know mm -hmm. yeah like that to to a certain extent that that is you know a part of it but for sure you set your own boundaries bro i'm telling you my mm -hmm. father got here after walking two weeks in the desert dehydrated all his toenails were gone because you know they had to cross uh, the desert at night they couldn't move it like during the day. They had they moved very little during the day because they didn't want to get caught. Mm -hmm. You know, facing the dream of a better life. Got here on a Wednesday, started working on a Thursday, not knowing the language, not knowing how like anything financial worked here. He had never had a bank account. Um, he finished uh, a school, uh, but other than that, he was a complete stranger to this country. You know, mm -hmm. he got here, he built his agenda he built his uh, uh he, he built his momentum before he could bring us over because he didn't want uh us to suffer again what we were suffering in mexico here you know he wanted to get it uh you know a good foundation so that we could uh, come over um yeah man so you know he's a, a prime example of that anything you say your mind to it can be done you know he has uh, he has a home he has, his cars are paid for. He has a bank account. He has a savings account. Um, he basically is living the American dream and became somebody great, you know, out of nothing. He had to learn the language just like I did. He learned it. Uh, his job skills, they were way different from uh, what he was doing in Mexico. So he had to get uh, new trades. Um, he became... Um, he became a, a really uh, important asset to the company that he was working for, uh, was making close to 150 a year, man. Like that's big, you know, and not knowing the language, not knowing, uh, how things worked over here. You know, he didn't have a home. He basically got here, you know, had to find shelter on his own, all that good stuff. And, you know, when I see people, you know, telling me that they're struggling because they feel that, 
you know, due to their background or where they come from or how they look or how they talk, they can't get any opportunities anywhere. But like I said, you, you make your own opportunities, man. Like that's not an excuse at all. And I think it's, that's uh, bro, your, your, your story and your dad's story. And like your whole family has amazing stories of like coming straight from the mud, straight from the struggle and making something out of it. And I think there's something to be said for grit, man. I think it just takes grit, like straight up desire and wanting to make something happen and then going and making something happen. And one thing that I, I noticed that you have, and even if people are listening or watching, they'll hear it in the way you just spoke is that you don't have a victim mentality. You very much have a perspective of like, yeah, people do treat me differently because I'm brown. People have looked down on me. Cops have pulled me over thinking I'm a criminal. Like all that stuff has happened to me. But you said it and it was so key. You said, I don't let that define me. You don't hold it against people. You don't let that make you bitter or angry. You just accept. And you've said it several times. And I have it tatted on my arm. You accept what you can't change, man. And then you yeah. change the things that you can. And I think that's important. And I'm not, again, man, I'm, I, I wish everybody got treated equally. Like, I think we all wish that the world was perfect. You know, I wish everybody had money and food and no one went hungry and no one had to struggle, but that's not the world we live in. That's not life. Like it hasn't been since the beginning of time. There's always been good and evil, right? And, and we're in the middle of more good and evil. But I think if people were able, uh, I, I mean, all people, black, white, brown, yellow, if everybody was able to have more of a sense of gratitude like you do, that's like, look, I'm happy. I'm grateful that I have this, that I've been given this opportunity and I'm not going to waste it uh, uh, feeling, feeling bad for myself. I'm going to do what I can to make my situation better. I think that's super powerful because you have every reason more than most people I know to be like the system's against me. The people are against me. Uh, I got no handouts. I had no opportunity. So woe is me, but you've never had that since the day I oh. met you. You've never had that. Yeah, man, we have to we have to empower each other to to want to do better, man. Because, you know, just imagine if we lived in a world where uh, people could see what you're struggling with, and instead of helping you, they brought you down. I mean, it happens, but at the same time, there's people like you and me that are gonna encourage one another to want to do better. And you know, at the end of the day, that's that's all that matters, man. That you have. You know, people that care for you and, and love you and want you to, you know, be the best that you can be. Um, like I said, there's going to be people out there that are going to be completely against what I'm talking about. But, you know, you just got to find your peace, man. And, and if you can't find it in people, you know, there's other resources that that, that will be more than capable to, of, of helping one another. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, if we don't have each other, what else do we have, you know? That's so true, man. And that's like, and, and with the, the current racial, uh, my dad calls it cultural chaos, because that's where it is. Our culture is in chaos uh, with the talk of racial, racial inequality. Like, like I tell people, like, no single person is going to be able to just yell at the internet and stop racism. Like, that's not going to happen. You screaming and getting angry about uh, uh, things that are wrong. Like, George Floyd is disgusting, man. That's wrong. Like, the fact that police use their power in many situations to abuse black, white, whatever, anybody that, that they become the oppressor to, like that's unfortunate. But you can't, you can't stop that by yourself. So to your point, what you have to do is you have to love the people around you. And I know that sounds corny and cheesy and whatever, but it's true, like you can help, uh, you can help people be treated better by starting where you're at. Like you yelling at your phone and at the internet and posting memes, ain't changing nobody's lives and it's not making a difference in the world. It's, it's how you behave with the people around you. So if you did have a little bit of uh, prejudice in your heart before this, you can fix that by treating the brown, black, white, whatever people, whatever people you're prejudiced, if you're, if you're prejudiced against people with neck tattoos, the next time you see somebody with the neck tattoo, consciously make an effort to say hi to them or to like smile at them. Like those are the small acts that will build up, that will actually change society and actually change the way people treat each other. And I, yeah. I, again, I'm down with, with uh, I wish people were equal. I want all people to be equal. And I, I wish there was a magic button to make it happen. But what I know as a human who's lived life like you is that A, life is not fair and we can't fix that on our own. 
And B, it will never be, be fair completely. So you have to accept that there will always be injustices and inequalities. But what you can do is you can treat the people around you better. And when you treat the people around you better, then they treat the people around them better. And then it just ripples outward. And then everybody is treating the people around them better. That's how you make change. And yeah. uh, like we keep saying, and I keep trying to tell people, change starts where you're at. It doesn't start on the internet. Yeah, no, you're completely right, man. It starts at home. Uh, it starts, you know, by treating your own people better, bro. Like, I can't, I've, I'm not gonna lie. I've been prejudiced, you know, in the past. I've, I've had encounters with people that, you know, rub me the wrong way and I generalized everybody, you know? And that's what we need to, to stop, you know? Like, we make Mexican a dirty word. We make Salvadorian a dirty word. We make black a dirty word. You know, we need to stop that. But at the same time, we need to, you know, help contribute to want to better our society. You can't talk about how, you know, your neighborhood is being policed on 24 seven, you know, uh, how crime is, is like off the charts when ourselves, you know, are jeopardizing our own people, our own culture, our own uh, um, uh, neighborhoods. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you really wanted to make a change, you would stop selling dope on every corner of your neighborhood. If you really wanted to make a change, you would stop gangbanging in your neighborhoods, you know? But people don't see that. People just see, oh, you know, uh, this white folk, you know, they're, you know, oppressing us. They're not really helping us, but help, you know, you have to help, want to help your own people at the same time, you know, like, it, it the white man didn't come to your neighborhood and start saying, saying, hey, here's some drugs, go disperse them and sell them to your own people so that they can, you know, move any higher, you know, this mentality of like, oh, they want to keep us numb, they want to keep us down, they don't want us to get out the ghetto, no, man, that has to stop, mm -hmm. because you know, I'm out the ghetto, I'm in Richardson, I live in Richardson, mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. I lived in East Dallas my whole life, you know. Mm -hmm. You and, saw all that growing up, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, I did. And, you know, and uh, uh, getting rich off of people's misfortune is like, it's a, a very sad thing, you know. And um, I saw it firsthand people being getting addicted to all this, you know, drugs that were being sold by their own people. Like, that really hurt me, you know what I mean? Because we're supposed to, you know, you, you want to you wanna talk about equality, but at the same time, you're hurting your own people. How does that make any sense? You know, right. we right. have to start from, you know, the source, man. We have to, you know, love each other, encourage one another and, and stop generalize, generalizing everybody, you know, because right. for a while, you know, if they call me Salvadorian, I would get offended, you mm -hmm. know, just because of some bad encounters that I have with certain people that rub me the wrong way. I generalized everybody. And I stopped doing that a while back, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, we're all people. We all make mistakes, you know? I'm sure I wrote somebody the wrong way that was Salvadorian. They call him Mexican. He thinks of me, you know what I mean? But I'm trying to change that. And it starts at home with your own people, you know? And we just have to be better with one another. Man, I think I, I'm glad that you said that because that's something I've been on recently. Um, and I haven't said it too much. I need to start talking about it more, but it's been in my head a lot is that we have to stop putting people in these general boxes. Like, like the white man's trying to oppress us. I ain't trying to oppress nobody. So chill on that. Again, yeah. there are white men with a lot of money and power that do want to oppress people, but to, but to blanket statement, all white people into that group is silly. And, and, and to the same notion to say that, that all immigrants are, taking our jobs and coming here to sell drugs and, and, and uh, just are, are only criminals to say that all Mexicans are like that. And all Salvadorians are like, and all immigrants are like this. That's a generalization that is ridiculous again. And then to the black point to say that all black people slang dope, all black people do this, all black people are criminals, all black people shoot other black people. That's not true. Some do. Most don't, right? Like most most white people don't hate black people. Most black people aren't all criminals. Most immigrants contribute and pay taxes like you do. Like, you have, we have to stop taking the minority of a group and making it the majority of the group and saying, yeah, all people are like this and all people are like that and all the cops kill everybody. And like, no, they don't. <laughs> we have to use our minds at some point and go, 
there are people in every group of people, every religious group, every color group, every country that do bad things. That doesn't make the entire group bad. But yeah. we've come, and the internet is not helping because it's just like you're either pro cop or anti cop, or you're, or you're all you're all in on the protest or you're all out on the protest or you're all mask or you're all no mask or like or you're republican or you're all democrat like you can't be a moderate like we we just take these stances and these sides that don't include the people that agree with both sides like i understand the people that don't want to wear a mask i think they have valid points i personally wear a mask and i agree with that side but i hear both sides and you mm -hmm. said it earlier bro you said it and it was so key. You said you teach your kids to listen. And I think that's the most important thing that we lack right now in America is nobody wants to listen. Nobody wants to listen to the other side because they're already dug in so hard on their stance and what they believe is right. They won't even listen to the other side. And we'll never make any progress if we don't listen to the other side, right? Like, yeah. if we aren't willing to listen to other people, how will we ever understand what they're trying to say? yeah it, it's it's um it's a constant struggle man like people everybody wants to be right that's mm -hmm. the that's the, the problem everybody wants to be right so they're not willing to listen to you know the the other side they're so sad and what they believe and they believe that what they believe is the truth so therefore what you have to say doesn't matter and we have to listen that's a key point you have to listen because at the end of the day that could give you knowledge and help you understand better what you know it is that they're trying to get across you know and uh i think there's a bigger picture here man i, I feel like mm -hmm. all this all this is you know being uh put out to divert our attention to something that really doesn't matter you know what i mean mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. this has been going on forever like why is that an issue now you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the, the media is really good at diverting your, your attention because there's bigger problems going on, bro. There's kids that are going missing yep. while staying in, uh, in ICE facilities. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. Trafficking. Uh, there's people dying from a disease that no, nobody really understands. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you marching for somebody that uh, was unfortunate to be in that situation. I get it. You know, you you mm -hmm. get at some point you get tired, but you know, while being out there, there's stuff that's happening that's being uh, put on the people that are peacefully protesting. Right. All the people movement and all that, all that stuff. You know, they're not they're not getting the attention that they that they should be. You know, everybody else is, you know, minorities are getting a lot of heat on right now because, mm -hmm. you know, you got people that don't really want to protest peacefully and, you know, just don't, they're not looking at the bigger picture, you know, like we're, we're so easily influenced by anything that you watch on your phone, you know, on TV that sometimes you even get addicted to it and you want to keep looking into it and you know that's all you're thinking about and that that, that diverts your attention from what, what it is really going on you know and sometimes you know like there's stuff that i i'm personally i've it's it's been occasions when i just looking on my phone and i get so into something that i just keep looking into it and mm -hmm. then towards the end of the day you know there's this uh this little tab on your phone that shows you the screen time that you've been on and it'll say three hours four hours like man like i just spent four <laughs> hours of my life looking at something that's not even affecting me you know what right. i mean and right. my whole on because we're so easily influenced by this you know what i mean and what we need to do is we need to be putting out positive um positive uh, notes out there and just encourage people to want to you know be better themselves because even music nowadays man music influences kids so much mm -hmm. that i assure you that has a lot to do with the crime rate going up 100 drug use you know what i mean yeah you know like up to uh, like 20 years ago uh promethazine was just a painkiller that they gave you when they put your teeth out now kids are drinking it because you know uh 
hip hop made it cool to, you know, sip lean. People yep. are dying of sleep disease because of that, you know what I mean? But they're not putting that out there because they yep. want to keep people trapped and they want to keep them on the trance of not wanting to better themselves. They want to keep them yep. on the line of just being okay with what they have and when their next high is going to be, you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. And, and, and to, to your point, like, uh, I'm, I'm with peaceful protesting, bro. It's in our constitution that you have a right. And what other country tells you, you have a right to when you are upset with us, you are, have a right to go march in the streets in protest. No other country, I don't know of any country, that in their constitution, the foundation of their nation, it says you have the right to get upset with us and go protest peacefully, peacefully. And, and I'm not here to judge the people that if you, if, if people want to fight about, oh, don't judge the rioters and the looters, I'm not. God will judge whoever he has to judge, right? That's not, that's not my, my, my position. I'm not going to stand here and talk down to people that are rioting and looting. I don't personally agree with it, but I don't have to answer for their actions later in life. And it's a small minority. I think what you said is important, though, is like, if you actually are passionate about the movement and about racial equality, don't let them hijack your message because they want to divert your attention over here or they want to get you upset and look over here because the system, the system is set up to oppress certain groups of people. Um, and, and the people that run our system, um, the, not all of them, but a lot of them, they want you to go and get upset and they want to control the narrative of, of the movements of equality. They want to take the protests and run them over this way instead of having them continue to go this way and actually make a good difference. Because peaceful protesting has been shown to make real differences in our country and other countries when done correctly. But like you said, they want Antifa and a lot of other groups and George Soros, as much as people want to talk about conspiracies, I think most people that have looked into it long enough know that George Soros and many of his other cronies and a lot of unnamed individuals have infiltrated the movement of racial equality and it infiltrated the peaceful protests to hijack it and to make it violent and to, to turn the course so that people go this way while they do stuff over here that has nothing to do with helping people become more equal. They want to hijack good movements because they don't like when good people get together and protest peacefully because they see the power in that and they like having all the power. And yeah. so we have to be careful because again, I'm very close to the issue. I got a lot of friends that I, I have made really good points to me about how they feel that the system has been set up and I totally agree with it. But these people also have good perspectives and know that there are certain ways that will actually bring about change. And there are certain ways that uh, will actually uh, help their narrative and they will clamp down more and oppress people more because they'll go, see, look at the violent protesters, look at the rioters, even though that's a small group and a lot of them are agents of other organizations that have infiltrated it, but they like to disband these movements. And, and if it was brown people, we'd be doing the same thing. We'd be peacefully marching, talking about immigration, and they would try to hijack it and they would send in agents to try to disband it because they don't like when we the people have power. And that's, I think, the bigger issue. And I think people have to look past, like you said, just the here and now. They got to look past just the uh, the system versus black people and take a step back and go, oh, shoot, the system's against a lot of people, not just yeah. black people like the systems. And, and uh, not to take away that we have done a bad job in America on how we treat people of minorities. We've gotten better. We still have a long way to go. but We've gotten better. But it's not it, it shouldn't be black people versus white. Like they want us to fight each other. And we have to yeah. remember it's not us versus each other, bro. It's us versus uh, uh people and systems that want to control the power just like in any country in venezuela for example that had, was 20 years ago venezuela was an incredible nation with prosperity and money and they were killing it and bad people got in power and it became the people versus them and now they're they're war torn right yeah. we can't let we can't let the powers divide us against ourselves because 99% of people are good people and they don't hate each other and they're not racist. You know what I'm saying? Right. But the yeah. media will tell you that everybody's a racist. Yeah. Well, well, people have to understand that, you know, the, um, you know, the uh, white supremacists and the Aryan Brotherhood, what they're trying to accomplish now is, you know, keeping the, the Aryan race pure. 
Mm -hmm. And they understand now that minority is majority. So the majority mm -hmm. of the people on earth are either of color, mixed, there's no longer a pure white race. So that's what they're scared of. But like you said, mm -hmm. it's a small percentage. And they right. infiltrate all these movements to kind of keep us at war and want to fight each other. You see, because now for, for a minute, you know, there was like a lot of Hispanic, uh, like the Hispanic uh, 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 crowd, like uh, the, um, what, do, what do you say? Um, like the Hispanic uh, public was really enraged with, you know, all this African-American uh, young kids going out and, you know, beating up uh, vendors out in the street. And, you know, uh, the guy that just died in, in Austin not too long ago, he got shot because he, he was robbed. You know, they want to keep us, you know, in conflict with each other to kind of divert our, our issues. And mm -hmm. I think we're getting better at, you know, catching on to these things and with the help of, you know, communities, not just black and brown communities, bro. You know, because mm -hmm. we are all, we're all in this together because, you know, if if uh if it's a community and you know you have black brown and white that live there they're all gonna struggle you know what i mean it's not just about you know colors here it's communities and if mm -hmm. uh, one goes down they all go down and they want to mm -hmm. keep us at, at this level where they don't want us commuting with each other and they don't want us to better ourselves or peacefully protest they want us to be at war at all times and yep. i feel getting better at catching you know these things that that uh divert us from the from the actual problems that are going on in, in this right. uh, in this country. right i think and and again back to what i said earlier it's so important to before you start turning on your brothers and sisters whether they're black or white or whatever you know if they if they say something you don't agree with and you're like no that's not but first like have a conversation listen you'll actually probably find most of the time, if you just listen to somebody and have a five-minute calm conversation before you get riled up, you'll realize you guys probably agree on almost everything. But the internet and the powers that be have influenced your mind to be against each other. And the minute you turn on each other, you forgot about the actual problem anyways. Exactly, yeah. I, I find that, you know, like, I find myself having more conversations about this, you know, very often just because... Uh, I agree with almost 90% of what the president is doing in this country. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as I tell, like, for example, a Mexicans like, yeah, man, Trump's a good president. Like he helped, you know, build the economy up and he's looking out for his people. I was like, yeah, but he's racist. And I was like, he's not racist. You know what I mean? I want to put that out there. He is not racist. Uh, he just has a different view of things and people like to pick nitpick, you know, conversations and, you know, they, they throw it out there and they want to make him look like the enemy. But people got to understand, he's just the face of, you know, our government. Right. You know, yes, in reality, he has no power. There's people behind him in power with more money than he has. They're basically the puppeteers, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. The face. And like I was telling you, they want to divert the attention away from them. So what do they do? Oh, here, yep. here, Trump, here's your Twitter account. Go right. crazy, you know. Right. And at the same time, man, like we got, we got to be liable for, for you know, our own mistakes. You know what right. I mean? And not want to blame other people for our misfortunes because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, if you're out on the street, it's your own fault because you have all the United States provides you with everything that it could possibly provide you with to be successful. If you choose not to take the help they're giving you, then, you know, there's nothing else they can do for you. You know what I mean? And, and there's definitely, I mean, there's obviously rare cases where like people actually are on the streets because, you know, they oh, got, yeah. they've had mental problems or they have, you know, something happened in their life where they actually are down and out. And that's when, what you said though, as then as a community, we need to help those people, right? We need to go, you know, we go to Watermark. Like those people, the, the, Watermark is the type of group of community that they'll go grab people off the streets and bring them into their own home. Like yeah. there's, there's no rules against, I'm not saying everybody should go grab a homeless person and bring them oh. into their house. But I'm yeah. saying like, 
you can make a difference uh, right where in your community that you say is oppressed. Well, don't become the oppressor then. Don't become someone that ignores it. Go do something about it, right? Like me, I've started recently in the past few months through COVID, I bought a big old case of water and I carry a bunch of granola bars. And every time I see a homeless person at a stop sign or a lot at the highway up here, you know, they like to be on the corners when the light's red, when you're coming off the highway, I open the door and I give them food and water. And one of the guys the other day asked me, do you got any water? And thankfully I did. Like those are small things that we yeah. can do because I can't stop racism. I can't stop Trump's Twitter fingers. I can't stop nuclear war. Like I can't stop 99% of the things that we all think we want to stop global warming. Like I can't stop. I can't solve the world's issues, yeah. but I can solve my brother's issues up here at uh, 75 and 635. Like I can help yeah. him have some water for the day. Like we yeah. forget that we have a lot of power as individuals. And then as you said, as a community, we are powerful, bro. And I do want to insert this here in America, um, not defend, again, I don't ever defend all that America's done. I think we've done a lot of evil, man. I think this is a great country that's been built off of a lot of evil. Um, and, but we're, it doesn't make everybody that lives in this country now evil, right? Like we didn't build America. We weren't here 400 years ago. We weren't involved in the building of it or we would have done it differently, right? We would not have done what happened to the Native Americans. Like we would have not uh, brought over slaves like you and me, I'm saying. Um, but we can't change that. But we do have to understand that America at this point does have a lot of opportunity. And one of the things I, I want to, to, to strike on, though, is we have uh, the best constitution in the world. And what I mean by that is the constitution is our, the, the, the uh, declaration of what we're about as a country, right? And we haven't done perfectly at keeping to it. But the freedom to speak, the freedom of speech, to say what you want. What other nation tells you, hey, if you don't like what we are doing, you have the right to speak against us. You can't do that in China. You can't do that in North Korea. Can we do that in Mexico? Can we just talk about the government wrong? No. We might be able to, but my, somebody might find you. Yeah, you'll disappear. <laughs> right? We have the right to bear arms. Why, why do we have the right to bear arms? I know this is a tough point for people, guns. 99% um, of gun violence is committed by criminals. Let's state that. So... So taking away the guns isn't going to help because the criminals are getting their guns illegally. But that's, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. You have the right to bear arms. Why? In case your government becomes tyrannical and turns on the people as it is proving that it is doing. So we have the right to speak against the government. We have the right to own weapons to defend ourselves against the government. We have the right to peacefully protest. And I could go on and on and on and on. But my point being is that we have to be grateful. And I was talking about this in the podcast I was on earlier. When life hits you and tough things happen and there's things that you can't control, you have to identify what am I grateful for? Like, what do I have? Yes, we don't have a lot. We don't have equality. We don't have good police sometimes. We don't have a lot of things. But what do we have? We have a constitution that up to this point, before they try to change it, it defends us. We have the constitution. You can say whatever you want. You can own a firearm in your own, and to defend your home and your family. Those are good things, right? So my point just being like, we have to be grateful for what we do have as we try to fix the things that are broken. Like not everything is broken, right? The constitution tells us and gives us rights that other countries don't have. And, and, and the only way to fix the system is not to break and tear down the system because then, then you have no country and you have to create another country. What you have to do is use those rights and use that system to, they want to infiltrate the, pro, the protests? Let's infiltrate the system by exercising your right to free speech, exercise your right to own a firearm, exercise your rights. Don't let them take your rights because once they start taking your rights, then you don't get to peacefully protest. You don't get to say what you want. Right. So I think people need to be more grateful for the fact that we live in a very, very free country. There's a lot of issues and we should fix them. I'm not taking away from that. But this is a very, very free country up to this point. And we should be very grateful for that. And I know you and your family are extremely grateful because you've benefited off of this. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, the things in Mexico are not as good as it could be at this point. Um, you know, Crime has spiked since, you know, the capture of uh, one of the, the greatest uh, capos of all time, El Chapo. 
So now they're just fighting for territory and it's tearing up families, man. Um, mm -hmm. Not even like, a couple of weeks ago, my cousin's car was burnt. Because you told me they, that. Yeah, because they captured one of the cartel leader's uh, family members and they wanted him out. So the only way they could, you know, get the government's attention is by destroying property and, you know, just creating chaos like it's happening here, you know. Over there, it's not as, you know, the, the government is not as uh, straightforward as it is here, you know. Uh, so they gave in and they just returned you know, the family members because they have no structure uh, mm -hmm. because the uh, the organized crime has infiltrated our uh, our communities so so hard that it's really impossible to get rid of them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that my family's safe. I'm grateful that, you know, a, apart from all this that's going on, I still have my health. I have a job and, you know, my kids are healthy. That's all I could ask for, man. That, you know, there comes a point in your life where you just stop caring for yourself and you have to care for, you know, who you're upbringing. And that's my kids, you know. I would go work in the field if I had to just to provide for my family and kids. And and that's just the mentality that you have to have nowadays, and especially if you're, you know, planning on building a, a family. I, I suggest that, you know, you stop being selfish and start being selfless. Care for, care for others, and that'll take you a long way. That's good uh, practice to to become a good, you know, member of of a family or, or, or a great society as we have here now. And and you just gotta be grateful, man. Every day is a blessing. Every day mm -hmm. that you earth is a blessing, and mm -hmm. you have to make account. You know, mm -hmm. you have to make account, or else you know you you're you're just gonna be wasting life and you know perfect opportunities in, in the future so you know you mm -hmm. just gotta be grateful at all so times true. well i'm about to wrap this up bro but thanks for coming on i just want to let people know one last time we're not here taking any political stance we're not here saying that we know everything and that we're against groups and four different groups this is not a political stance this is not us talking one side or another side you and me and people that know us we are for what's right we want people to be equal. We don't want the police to kill people. We don't want our government to oppress our own people. But we, at the same time, we have to remain grateful for the things that we have. Because the minute we become ungrateful, then everything is, then we are gonna see everything as a problem. And we'll never be able to fix anything if we, if we have, a, have the wrong mindset, right? We have to stay, as a country, as people, black, white, brown, Asian, everybody, America is a melting pot. As Americans and people that live in America, we don't have to love everything about America, but we need to love each other as fellow Americans and stand with each other because again, we all agree on probably 95% of everything. The internet is loud, negativity will tell you so much and everybody should be against each other. We have to remain united and not let the powers that be infiltrate our love for each other and our love for what's right. So I just wanted to say that because I know this might stir people up in their feelings. We are yes. not against anybody. We are here to listen, support, encourage, and love our fellow humans, whatever color, whatever political group, whatever struggle or background you come from. We're here to love each other, not to tear each other down. Exactly. Well, thank yeah. you for being a good example of that in your life, bro. Like, I just want to say that you've been a good example and you've impacted my life as I've watched you lead your family and treat others with love. I just want to give you credit here, man. You've done a great job of being an example and not, not being a victim. Thank you, man. And uh, I also want to thank you for, you know, showing me, you know, the, the righteous ways. And, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, the man that I am now as of today if you hadn't taken me to church with you thank you for that and uh, i really appreciate your friendship everything that you know we've talked about and you know you're just you're like a brother to me you know and i just want to thank you for that and thank you for you know taking time out of your day to speak with me because i know that it you know it's it's very very easy to you know just live life and forget about others but you're a prime example of you know loving one another and 
setting others first than than yourself. You know, you like they said it, they said at Warren Mark, you always have to be third, God first, others second, and you last. So and you're a prime example of that. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for loving my family. Thank you for loving me. And I'm great to to have known you and have your friendship. Always, you. brother. You know I love you. Got love tons too. of love for you. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. Until thank we you. speak again. Yes, Peace. sir. Got to represent. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, man. On that note, until we meet again, this has been another episode of Inside the Mirror. Peace. Peace.